right. Good morning and welcome to analog electronic circuits. This is lecture 34. Uh, so, in the last class, uh, we were looking at uh, trying to stabilize uh, a high order system and for example, we had taken a system where the loop gain function had uh, third order. and uh, recognize that the system is unstable for a naught cube f uh, greater than or equal to 8. Then we said well, if we try to make it look like a first order system by creating an extra pole where this omega d is called the dominant pole. and the dominant pole omega d is much much smaller than omega naught all right and uh, so the idea is that over the important So, this is a log plot and this is 0 dB right. So, over the important uh, frequency range or the, over the frequencies of interest, uh, the frequency response of the loop gain function resembles that of a of a first order system right and uh, uh, consequently the uh, stability is that uh, I mean you should expect it to behave like a first order system as far as stability is concerned and uh, uh, the unity gain frequency. Uh, so, for all practical purposes this should behave like uh, 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 a system with a unity gain frequency of a naught cube f omega b. Hmm? Okay. So, now uh, The uh, uh, so yesterday we also said that well there are several choices of omega d which uh, uh, you know will make the system look like a first order system. Uh, here I mean uh, the one in black is one choice. Uh, another choice could perhaps be something like this where you know you choose the dominant pole frequency. Right, I think this is messed up. Okay. So, uh, So, this is a naught cube f omega d 1 and uh, this unity gain frequency is a naught cube f omega d 2 all right. And uh, uh, what do you call the we uh, yesterday also discussed that you know choosing omega d 2 as the dominant pole frequency makes the frequency response a better approximation to that of a true first order system because at the frequency at which the frequency response deviates from that of a true first order system the gain of the magnitude of the loop gain is 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 much smaller than what it would be for omega d 1 
is this clear ok and uh, uh, and consequently uh, the uh, uh, so we therefore needed you know a way of quantifying i mean it's all right to say well you know you can uh, you can plot the frequency response of a true first order system and then you know check out uh, at at what gain this uh, the two of them deviate right uh, but then uh, you know at the point of deviation you can see that the magnitude is very small so a better way of of quantifying what the uh, what do you call uh, uh, the betterness of uh, you know how well the dominant pole compensated system resembles a true first order system is is to measure the phase of the loop gain function at the I mean to measure the phase you need some frequency correct uh, right and uh, uh, so uh, the uh, uh, the phase is basically a good place to measure it is uh, is the unity gain frequency right uh, and in this case uh, it's either a naught cube f omega d2 or a naught cube f omega d1 as the case may be so what is the uh, so uh, for if omega d2 the unity gain frequency omega sub u is a naught cube f times omega d2 so the angle of the loop gain function at omega u so angle of the loop gain function at j omega u is nothing but minus 3 tan inverse omega u over omega omega naught all right ok and is that all minus tan inverse omega u over omega d in this case omega d2 and uh, what is the what is tan inverse omega u over omega d2 remember omega u is nothing but a naught cube f omega d2 so tan inverse omega u by omega d2 is uh, is nothing but tan inverse a naught cube f and what comment can we make about a naught cube f is very large. So, uh, uh, tan inverse q uh, tan inverse of a naught cube uh, f is basically is going to be 90 degrees. So, the angle of the loop gain therefore, minus pi by 2 minus 3 tan inverse omega u by omega no. Hmm? So, uh, and sanity check as omega naught tends to infinity right. Uh, basically, uh, what comment can you make? what is the magnitude of what is the angle of the loop gain at the unity gain frequency minus pi by 2. So, angle of the loop gain at j omega u will be negative pi by 2 all right and that is what we expect for a true first order system anyway. Is this clear? So, uh, So, okay, looking at this picture, what comment can you make about the angle of the loop gain function at the unity gain frequency when we choose omega d2 versus, uh, so in other words, loop gain at the uh, angle of the loop gain at the unity gain frequency for omega d2 angle of the loop gain at the unity gain frequency for omega 
d 1 right uh, uh, to you know not get confused about you know uh, what do you call phase lag and phase lead and negative and positive and so on. So, this will give you simply the phase lag right at the unity gain frequency for both choices of dominant pole frequency. Hmm? Which one will have a larger phase lag? Which choice of dominant pole frequency will have a larger phase lag? So, uh, uh, loop gain at the unity gain frequency for omega d 2 versus uh, I mean the, the angle of the loop gain at the unity gain frequency for omega d 2 versus omega d 1. Which one do you think has got a higher phase lag at the unity gain frequency? Which choice of omega d will result in a higher phase lag right at the unity gain frequency omega d 1. Why? Omega d 1 is greater than omega d 2 and therefore, uh, the uh, uh, the angle of the loop gain is, uh, is, is uh, I mean the, the phase shift added due to those poles omega naught right uh, at the unity gain frequency is uh, you know it is it's much higher than what you would get at omega what you get for omega uh, 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 d 2 right. So, this basically uh, the angle of the loop gain here is uh, is smaller than uh, in, in absolute value it is smaller than the angle of the loop gain at omega d 1 all right. So, uh, uh, next thing is uh, 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 the next thing that I would like to uh, talk about therefore, so in other words this angle of the loop gain at the unity gain frequency is uh, uh, basically an indicator of you know the location and the effect of all these high order poles on the on the stability of the system correct. So, if all the poles were uh, infinitely far away from the unity gain frequency the angle would simply be negative 90 degrees correct. So, any increase of the phase or any increase of the phase lag beyond negative 90 degrees uh, basically is reflective of how far the poles are from the, the unity gain frequency. Hmm? And uh, you know what, uh, uh, what do we have to be very wary about? Remember that the closed loop gain is nothing but 1 over f times loop gain of s by 1 plus loop gain of s and if this loop gain of s becomes. So, if loop gain of, of j omega u the unity gain frequency let us say this becomes minus 1 which is basically 1 angle 180 degrees one angle I mean phase lag. So, one angle minus 180 degrees. Then what happens? This 1 plus loop gain simply becomes simply becomes 0. So, the closed loop gain becomes infinite which basically means that the system is unstable all right. So, this uh, so, uh, so what so uh, if the angle of the loop gain at the unity gain frequency right uh, is 180 degrees then system is unstable yeah so basically uh, the uh, so that brings us to the next topic so basically the question is you know uh, is there I mean clearly omega using choosing a lower dominant pole frequency makes the, the loop gain function a better approximation to a true first order system. But, but uh, we are paying a big penalty uh, for choosing the omega d 2 right and what is that penalty we are paying? You can see that the unity gain bandwidth of the loop gain function which uh, is also the 3 dB bandwidth of the closed loop system right. Remember that if you have a first order system the unity gain bandwidth of the the unity gain bandwidth of the, uh, the loop gain function is also the the 3 dB bandwidth of the closed loop system 
you can and uh, so if uh, choosing omega d2 therefore basically reduces the unity gain bandwidth as you can see and consequently the 3 dB bandwidth of the closed loop system is also is also reduced right ok. So, that is the the that is the uh, you know that is the price you are paying to make a better approximation to a true first order system. So, but then the, the obvious question is you know as long as my system is stable right uh, with with this a naught cube f d c loop gain, why do I care about making it approximate a good first order system correct ok. So, for instance what is wrong with me in this example choosing omega d 1 as opposed to omega d 2 even with omega d 1 you can see that the uh, the unity gain frequency, I mean uh, the, at the frequency at which the response deviates from that of a true first order system, the gain is already considerably below below 1. So, then the next obvious question is hey why you know you know why am I losing out on bandwidth right. What if I choose an even higher dominant pole frequency? do something like that. So, you can see that here I get an even larger this is omega d 3. So, I get now an even larger unity gain frequency, but what comment can we make about the angle of the loop gain you know as we keep progressing from omega d 2 to omega d 1 to omega d 3. The phase lag of the loop gain function at the unity gain frequency is going on increasing reflective of the fact that the higher order poles are be getting closer and closer to the unity gain frequency right. So, the uh, uh, so and and how much phase can we tolerate before the loop gain becomes unstable? How much phase lag can we afford in the loop before the loop becomes unstable? Pardon? we can tolerate 180 degrees right. So, this quantity the, the angle of the loop gain at j omega u right must be I mean how much uh, so the the margin we have for the phase before the loop becomes unstable is the difference between it is it is 180 degrees minus the phase lag of the loop gain at j omega u correct. We can tolerate a phase lag of 180 degrees correct or pi radians and uh, the loop gain function at the unity gain frequency has some phase lag. So, the margin we have right for excess phase before the closed loop system becomes unstable is 180 degrees minus the phase lag that we have at the 